All righty. Thank you all for tuning into the Digital Learning Conference. And let me start off by wishing everybody a fabulous 2022. This is going to be our year. I can feel it. And uh, for those of you wondering why does she sound odd and silly, it is because I am actually joining you here today from Melbourne, Australia, or as you guys like to say, Melbourne, Australia. Uh, that is my terrible accent or attempt at an accent. Uh, again, I want to thank you all for joining our session today titled The Course Designer's Guide to Hybrid Learning Experience. I'm going to dive on in now. Uh, so I mentioned a little bit about where I'm from, but what I failed to mention was that my name is Adina. And honestly, I did not approve this image. They snuck it in before um, or without my knowing. I am the product owner of Laurie. For those of you wondering why is she talking at us today? And Laurie is a course design tool which is dedicated to supporting course designers and educators deliver bold, interactive learning experiences. I've been working within the education sector and a variety of LMS platforms for the past half a decade, I would say, but um, I've actually been forever passionate about making a difference within the education space. Right, I'd like to take a very quick moment up front to break down the agenda for today's session. So I'll kick off with an introduction to Crystal Delta, which is where I am from, and Laurie is one of our many products. I will be touching very briefly on some of our other products and some of our services that we offer within that edtech sector. I'll then dive into identifying some of the key values of great course design, made ever more important as we all continue continue to navigate and learn from the shift toward hybrid learning models. Off the back of this, we'll then begin to explore how tools such as Laurie can help streamline some of the current course design and build pain points. This will include a quick Laurie demo. And for anybody who has any questions, please feel free to head on over to the Laurie booth at the conference and have a chat to Dinesh. Dinesh, if you're in the audience, if you can see me, stand on up uh, and give a bow or a little wave so everybody can spot you and come and find you after the session. Now, for those who don't know much about Crystal Delta yet, and hopefully this conference changes that for you all, we are at our core a digital adventurer. So we love to work with uh, organizations to empower them from all around the world to take control and ownership of their technology problems. And in particular, those technology problems surrounding education and educational offerings. Crystal Delta offer a wide variety of LMS services. Uh, I'll touch on a couple of them here, but again, Dinesh will be able to give you a very nice deep dive introduction to any areas that may interest you. So we do offer development, custom LTI and bespoke development that can be based around your own unique user requirements and uh, your user needs. We offer analytics so you can connect with and engage learning uh, and your learners through meaningful data that come off the back of your learning management system uh, and so on. Migration and archiving. So moving content from your legacy LMS over to Canvas with Crane. We also offer the archival of legacy content, grades and engagements um, as well there. So you can learn a little bit more about that after the session too. And of course, design. So we do offer course design and transformation services, which leverage Laurie, our course design tool. Now, before I dive into the importance of great course design, I wanted to share a couple of key metrics from last year. Now, these numbers are from July of 2021 and were obtained from the UNESCO Institute for Statistics data. Note that by July of last year, we had 157 million learners or students who were engaged with hybrid learning. That's 8.9% of all enrolled learners across elementary, primary, secondary, university levels uh, of many uh, areas, and that is global. 
In addition to this, we still had at this point as well, 19 countries who were experiencing nationwide school closures. The impact of the pandemic forced many institutions who had little to no structure in place beforehand to what an online only offering. Others were able to leverage hybrid learning. And on top of the pandemic, educators here in Texas were also at one point dealing with massive power outages. So adding even greater stress and complexities to delivering content to your students. Throughout all of this, we know two things for sure. One, with the number of learners losing that daily face-to-face -face interaction, Grace course design has never been more valuable. And two, Texan teachers are absolutely amazing. Now, I uh, want to dive on into um, the importance of course design. So we all know in this room, I'm sure, that course design is important for good education or quality education. But there are still some people out there who struggle with the idea of what course design is exactly and its benefits. A lot of organisations are also still coming to terms with what a great learning experience looks like for them and for their unique learners. And this is very okay. This is why we have fabulous course designers and educators like yourselves in the session today. Now, I am very conscious that one single slide with a few bullets here may in some ways oversimplify the importance of great design, but I'm sure you will all forgive me for this. Now, one of the key benefits of great course design is to ensure that learners are met with and walk away with a wonderful learning experience. This then directly impacts on a learner's overall success and satisfaction and completion rates. Learners also want a diverse, rich and interactive set of components to engage with. I have a friend who is actually studying nursing down here in Australia at one of the best technical schools schools and he turned to me over the weekend as we were out on our walk and said gosh it's just video after video I want to do something this is but one of many examples and it shows the importance of mixing technologies tools interactives in and amongst other traditional course content such as text and videos which we tend to see more so and of course, the final point I will touch on today is consistency. So great design will take away that learner's pain of asking, where to next? What now? How do I know where I'm going? It will eliminate some of that cognitive overload and create a really psychologically safe learning environment. Right, I'd now like to dive into one of the tools that will help to improve uh, some of the existing course design and build challenges being faced by many organizations around the world. And that is LORI. LORI is an LTI course design tool for Canvas, and it has been built and developed around direct user feedback from our wonderful community of users. So LORI is available for those who don't know uh, for Canvas LMS. It is also available for Blackboard and for um, uh, Brightspace, which is coming soon in the future as well. Now, Laurie is easy to learn. And I know a lot of people say that about their product, but really a lot of the feedback that we get from our users is that the pre-built content blocks and the templates help them build entire pages and modules and courses in minutes and hours, not days and weeks. And after one quick training session, a lot of our users start to become their own Laurie wizards. Laurie is intuitive and has intuitive UI. Laurie's advanced editing empowers users to create modern interactive online courses with ease and it is readily supporting academic workflows. It fits in and works with your Canvas build and design experience. So it's just helping make that experience seamless 
for users already building and designing in Canvas. And of course, it helps you to deliver more engaging content. So Laurie has an embed URL block. It allows the support of embedding other third party tools and videos such as YouTube, Vimeo, Google Docs and Slides can be embedded in inline preview, uh, Padlet content, H5P, and even our Laurie's own interactive content can also be added direct to all of your Canvas pages embedded and saved back to the LMS with zero fuss. This slide here uh, takes a little look at some of the robust features of Lorry, which in essence are all here to help empower course designers and you, techs and educators, to own and simplify the design and build of your Canvas courses at your organizations. So I'm going to touch on a couple of them, but really seeing is believing. I will dive on into the demo very shortly. So of course, at the core, we have the editor itself. The editor helps you create that engaging content across pages, modules, entire courses with a mix of media and text, images, and what have you. Your content is saved also natively to Canvas. So, um, it eliminates the need for you to uh, need to embed any content that you build with Laurie over back into the LMS using HTML code or anything of that nature. That is all taken out of the equation. Users can design and share. So you can build, um, so you can design, build, save, and share your templates or individual custom blocks and elements across your organization in minutes. It does come with an administrative portal as well, which allows you to do things like manage features uh, across different roles and permissions, which are linked directly to your own uh, LMS roles there as well. This is also where you have the opportunity to configure things like a custom color palette in line with your branding. Uh, this is also where you can configure things such as fonts uh, and other styles of that nature. There's of course media integration, which I touched on in the previous slide. So giving you the ability there to easily upload and use your own media directly from within the Lorry editor in Canvas. We have a wonderful and exciting new accessibility checker as well, which we will showcase um, in the coming week via a new video going up onto our YouTube site. So please do visit that space. The accessibility checker is built into the Lorry editor and will ensure that what you are delivering to your learners is accessible and does meet uh, AA 2.1 compliance. Then we have our own Lorry interactives, again, touched on very briefly in the previous slide there. This allows you to build and customize interactive content such as accordions, tabs, uh, multiple choice interactions and allows you to make them look and feel like your organization's brand and presence. We then have Google Fonts integration. So this allows you via the admin portal to gain access to hundreds of Google Fonts and set what you would like your users to use and have access to. There is also the H5P and interactive components. So for those who do not have a H5P account today, you can kick that journey off with Laurie's own, no, with Laurie's own nofuss.org integration there as well, which I can show you during the demo. Now, this slide here is just a very brief look at some of the key takeaways for course designers specifically. So we've got some of those things where Laurie adds value. You can see a couple of screen grabs here as well from within Canvas to showcase that. But essentially what it's going to help you to do at the core is to deliver that consistent experience for your learners. It's going to allow you to engage your learners with a web-like responsive experience. The content that you build with Laurie will automatically scale for tablet, mobile, and desktop devices. Laurie really, in essence, is there to help support a community of users. So you can get a community of educators or designers um, building and sharing that content amongst each other. You can share individual elements and blocks, likewise, entire pages as well. And really what the tool is doing is gifting back some time to yourselves, the educators, who have a number of things on your plate that you need to be focusing on at all times. And it's our aim with Laurie, essentially, that there are no more ruffled feathers. And yes, that pun was intended. Now, as I said earlier on today, seeing is believing. So I'm going to take a moment to pause here and dive on into the demo. 
Now, let me just stop sharing screen on that presentation and I will dive on into the lorry demonstration. So what you can see here is a page within a Canvas course shell. So this is a shell within our own instance of Canvas. And this is just an example of some of those different elements that you can use within Lorry to help build that consistent experience. So across the top here, we have what we refer to as our menu element. And this element can be inserted, pre-designed and inserted and shared, gives you the opportunity to create a quick sort of link navigation point to areas within your course to define modules, uh, to external library support, student support, and anything of that nature. You can see that we have banner images in place. I touched on before that H5P integration. This here is a H5P interactive component that's been embedded in that page. You can see this is all in Canvas as well. There are some uh, design elements here, two column designs. You can see featured areas where you can highlight background colors, underline components of that nature. We also have here some examples of our Lori own interactives. So we've got something like an accordion interactive here for you today and also an image slider. The best thing about everything that you see on the page today is also that it is responsive, as I said earlier. So we can scale that content down for mobile view. You can see that also the interactives themselves are responsive too, which is fantastic and exactly what you want to hear when you have zero to no HTML knowledge, like myself, guilty one in the room. I'm going to show you now how to create some of this content and use that for yourselves in as little as a couple of minutes. So I've got a page that is completely blank. I'm going to head on over here. You can see my digital learning conference page here. No content on it. In this separate tab here, and there's a method to my madness, so I can show you how quickly that saves on over to the LMS. I'm going to go ahead and launch Lori. Now, Lori will be available as a tool within the left-hand navigation menu. As I said earlier, the admin dashboard will help you enable features for different Canvas roles. So you may want to enable features for designers, TAs and separate features for teachers. Students, of course, are locked out of the application. So they won't be able to launch this and go ahead and make any edits and changes to that course content. Now, once I launch Lori, I'm going to go ahead and collapse the left hand nav. You can see one thing very clearly up front. These are the modules and the pages that I have in my Canvas course. So we've done this for a very deliberate reason. One of the main ones is that it's gonna help you go ahead and build in one streamlined workflow. So you're not continuing to need to close and launch the editor for pages and modules that you want to edit. You have the opportunity, of course, to edit pages, assignments, discussions, not already allocated to modules. So you can always dip into those as well. Now, I'm gonna dive on into my blank page here and launch the editor itself. At this point, I often get asked, okay, well, where are all the editing features, the buttons, the elements? How do I get going? And this has been a very deliberate change in the Lorry application. Again, to remove that cognitive overload and to streamline the build process, the Lorry editor now has a continually changing left-hand navigation menu that will help you navigate to what you can do next at any given moment. So we're starting with a blank page here. We're going to go ahead and hit add row. Once I add row, I have the opportunity to add from a variety of rows that are here present for me. Now, Let's say I want to add a two column row. I can select that and you can see I have a variety of style two column row options. Again, everything is completely responsive so you won't need to worry what that will look like across different devices. We also test our templates using Canvas's own native student and teacher mobile apps. Now, I'm going to go ahead and insert this particular column here. You can see I've got a 40 on the left-hand side, 60 on my right. There is an item here hit called outline that you can hit to see all your little padding and marks. Margins. Now, in my left-hand column, I'm going to go ahead and hit add, and that is going to introduce me to my library of elements. So these elements, everything from embedding images, videos, uh, the use of tables and interactives is all available here for you. I do want to add one note there. 
I'm starting to build from scratch. However, for those who already have content present in Canvas and in their pages, Laurie will fetch that and allow you to continue to edit that as well. So you do not need to start from scratch. You can, of course, absolutely edit existing content images within your elements that are already saved to native pages. Now, I'm going to go ahead and introduce you to a couple of the elements and then dive on in and show that real power of Laurie, which is templates to gain that time saving. So we'll go ahead and hit image here. You can see just like with the column element that I showcased before, there are a variety of image options available. I'm going to go ahead and hit image on its own. And you can see now Laurie is fetching all of the images firstly that are present within that Canvas course shell. So we allow you to use, edit the images that are already there saved with you. You can, of course, also upload images direct from your desktop that will be saved to your Canvas files for later use as well. So you don't need to go hunting for them. Now, let's say I love this image here. I'm going to go ahead and add that. You can see we've built in some accessibility touch points as you build. So things like adding alt text, you can, of course, flag that as decorative, which I can do here now. And we do have a new feature function, relatively new, that will allow you to edit that image as well. So you can go ahead and crop that image today to a circle and a square. You can see we have some grayed out options that are coming very soon to production as well. So I can go ahead and select a portion of that image that I want to feature. Here it is and hit apply. The really awesome thing that is going to happen here is that we're going to save a new image for you in files. And if you ever want to dip back to that original image that is not cropped, that will also be available in your Canvas file. So we're not replacing anything there for you, but adding a new image to your library. So I can now select this image. You can see by default, it is to the left. If I want to go ahead and play with anything to do with the image, such as size, I can go ahead and drop that down and make those changes. Note height is locked in and will automatically scale for images and videos to eliminate things like broken aspect ratio and really stretched out images, which are, I've been very guilty of in the past and my team will tell you so. Uh, you've got the opportunity to here play with space. So that left-hand menu is dynamically going to change for all of your elements, irrespective of which one you're editing, be it tables, be it dividers uh, or interactives. It will all be living in that left-hand menu there. So you can play with margins. This is where you also have your alignment control. So you can see it's left aligned by default. I can center, I can right align and so on as I wish. I can even apply background colors, um, borders, and also link both images and text to Canvas quick link functionality. So we've pulled that into the editor as well. So you can link to your own existing modules, pages, course navigation itself, anything of that nature. On the right-hand side here now, I'm going to go ahead and add a text element and just showcase that. So we'll add a text element here. This is going to say, welcome. You can see that my coffee is well and truly run out. So there we go. And I'm just going to copy and paste some content in to pad this page out a little bit. So now that we've got some copy and some images, I can do things like go ahead and duplicate entire rows. So I may want to duplicate this. In my copied section, I'm going to go ahead and move the left-hand column over to the right. Note when I select a column, it's got a little tiny mini menu that's dynamically changing. This arrow here will always let me know where I can move elements, columns, rows around to. So that's also dynamically changing. I'm going to flip that around. This row here, I'm going to go ahead and apply a background color, which I can do so just like that. In my top row now, let's say I have gone ahead and started with the two column row, but I'm thinking to myself, Adina, you're a bit of a deal, a bit of a pickle. You actually needed three columns there. I have the opportunity to, within the editor, go ahead and select to edit those row properties. So I can make this a three column row, even though I've got content present, just by clicking that. Again, variety of options available to me. I'll go for three evenly spaced columns. There we go. And you can see that that copy is actually going to dynamically resize and scale and make way for a new column. I can even do things like copy entire columns or individual elements, paste it, and then just go ahead and make minor adjustments. So I'm not forever pulling in new copy and content with every time. Um, that I build or start a new section. I want to touch on very briefly the preview function that we have in the editor today. This preview function will allow you to quickly see at a glance what that content will look like across a tablet, 
a desktop and a mobile device. So you can see when I hit mobile, it's going to show you that those elements there are uh, falling in line as they should be for a mobile device. Now, this is me just introducing you to the concept of building with some of those elements. The real exciting part of Laurie, as I said earlier, is the templating functionality. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear this page here. Yes, I'm sure I wanna do that. I can, of course, undo, redo anything that I do whilst editing. Let's dive on into templates now. Templates live in the top hand menu. Very easy to find, see for all users. You can see we have three different categories. Global. These are templates that can be shared at your entire organization level, meaning that it is a really wonderful way to create a set of templates that you then share as part of best practices with your whole organization. Things like an established course homepage, meet the educator page, don't forget your weekly reading page, student support, all of these things that you may want to be consistent in terms of flow and navigation across all of your courses. So really great way to do that. You then have my templates. My templates are templates, might be self-explanatory, but that you create as an individual user and that will follow you irrespective of what course shell you're actually editing in within Canvas. We then have shared templates. Shared templates are templates that can be shared at the sub-account level. And those sub-accounts are made available via the sub-accounts you have within your Canvas instance. A really great way again there to share dedicated templates with particular departments or year levels, depending on how you have that sub-account uh, system structured. I'm gonna go ahead and hit my templates. You can see this link List grows exponentially over time. Uh, if you're anything like me, I've probably built a million of them. They're very exciting. I can go ahead and always filter by category. You have the opportunity to set those categories at the organization level. I can also do a direct name search. So I'm going to go ahead and insert one that I have pre-built in the past. CD Sample Home. Awesome. That's a very exciting name. I know. When I'm happy with the template I've chosen, I'll go ahead and hit add. And I can now start to edit this to suit my particular course. So it's great. This could be a, a unit overview page. So it's a great example there that's been set in place for me. But I now want to make a couple of changes to suit my course. One first one being could be the banner. I actually teach a different course, not transformational leadership. So I'm going to go ahead and search for my banners for my course and I can go ahead and update that. So I teach a course in coding. So I'll go ahead and hit the coding banner. Again, I'm just going to flag this as decorative for the purposes of the demo, but I could add alt text there if I wanted to. Note, I've added this code image here. Now it's not full width, but to make it full width, all I do is hit size, full width, there we go. That will now always scale accordingly with the device that is being used. Insert course title here. You can see that a lot of the time, a really great way to utilize templates is to keep them instructional and simple, and then allow your educators as they use them uh, sorry, your uh, uh, teachers and course designers as they use them to go in and make those adjustments themselves. So this is going to say, welcome to coding. You can see we have a spell checker built in, which is fantastic. And note that I've not needed to worry about the size, the color, or the type of font because it's been set for me in the template. Now I can do things like I could say, for example, under this section here, I actually want to go ahead and add an interactive component uh, for my course. So under my Welcome to Coding, I'm going to go ahead and hit Add. It's going to introduce me to my suite of interactives, and I'm going to create a Lorry Interactive and then save this to my Canvas page. Now, launching Lorry Interactives, again, happens in the left-hand menu. All of the content you build will always be available for use, but you can, of course, create a new interactive at any point, and that will launch that interactive pop-up. I'm going to go ahead and create some tabs just for the purposes of the demo today on the spot and show you how easy that is to do. So this is demo day fun times and um, my, my naming is very, very exciting. So you'll have to live with me on that one. So this is going to say Lorem is and again, as I did previously, I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste some content in to fill that tab out a little bit. I now want to add a new tab or a new panel. I hit add new. This is going to say 
Lorem is amazing, awesome. And I'm gonna go ahead and paste some more copy. Now, note that you can edit this text as you see fit. So you might wanna do things like highlight areas. You can also insert media, videos, uh, images. You can make bullet points, quotes, all of that. If I wanna go ahead and make this first tab, sorry, my second tab, my first tab, I simply pick it up and drag it above. Now, to preview what I'm building, I hit preview. There are my tabs. So remember, I moved Laurie is amazing to the top. There's my little highlighted section. That's what that content would look like if I didn't add any customization to it. Nice, clean, simple, but say I want to customize and add some color. Hit the little customize button. You have the opportunity to alter fonts. So I may want to go ahead and make this Arial, for example. I can go ahead and make my font uh, white in this instance. Note there is the color spectrum available, but also commonly used colors will be present for a quick selection too. I can then go ahead and apply back background color. So I may want to do a nice dark gray tab there. I can do things like change the outline border. I'm going to do rounded over sharp edges and even add a little element of detail. So a full border or a line detail. So I'll do a little uh, left hand line there. And again, I'll go ahead and pick one of my commonly used colors, this blue, beautiful, and apply a width of three pixels, for example. Now, when I hit preview, you'll see all of those changes that I've made there. Best part as as with everything you've seen thus far today, not a single line of HTML code is required. Now, I'm going to go back to the editor. I'm really chuffed with this. I'm going to hit create. Shows you the interactive one last time. If you want to keep building, you can hit home. Keep making interactives while that pop-up is up. Otherwise, simply X on out. Left-hand menu will dynamically update. Your most recent interactive that you've just built and saved is present at the top. There we have it, Demo Day Fun Times. I'm gonna go ahead and add that to the page. It is that simple. There's my interactive. And at this point, you're probably wondering, okay, great. How do I get this to Canvas? How do I see it in Canvas? There is one button that needs to be hit. Along the bottom um, tab here, you've got a save to LMS. You've got a save as a template, which allows you to make a version of the template you've edited for yourself to make your life even easier as you move forward to other pages within your course, or you can delete. Of course, I don't want to clear that. I'm going to go ahead and hit save to LMS. You'll get a little alert that tells you it's saving. One that says saved successfully. Now remember, the page Page editing was digital learning conference. It started blank. Here it is. Canvas knows it's been updated. Let's go ahead and refresh that. And here is that template that we have embedded with Laurie. So within a couple of minutes, and honestly, I've probably talked more than I have shown things, we've gone ahead and inserted a template that is completely responsive for your learners. There we go with responsive interactives. Change the banner. We've updated our heading to suit our course. We've got our little tab interactive here that we've been able to build and embed with zero code. And then we've got the additional content that was there present for us in the past. Now, with templates like that, you then have the opportunity to update and add your own images, make adjustments to content, double click and update, preset images, and even create links to your own weekly uh, content or learning modules. This is just the tip of the iceberg. I could talk about Laurie all day long uh, and I'm sure Dinesh can as well. So please do make sure you go ahead and visit him at the booth. I'm going to go ahead and stop share on the Laurie demo component and just take it on back to my slide here one last time. I promise we're nearly over and you can go ahead and enjoy the face-to-face -face components of the conference. This is our thank you for attending again. So you've got here a little update on Crystal Delta. Um, go and visit us on the website and uh, Dinesh is in the picture here. So um, you can go ahead and use this guide as a reference to find him out on the conference floor. Have a wonderful time at the Digital Learning Conference and thank you so much for attending today's Laurie demo and our session session on course design for hybrid learning experience. Thank you so much. Bye.